I had a relation who died in a vineyard. Pulled over to the side of the road, ate too much fruit, died in his car. I wrote a book about it later on. It was called The Wrath of Grapes. <laughs> Sorry, it's a really bad joke. And it probably I'm the only person who's laughing right now. When we did stand-up comedy, this is a true story, um, in series two, the compere... Uh, after, after I came off stage, he said, you know, as a gift of stand-up comedy, you're an excellent wine taster. I think that sells it all. The other awful thing about that joke is absolutely true. I genuinely do have, or did have, a relation who died of eating too many grapes in a vineyard. And it was around the turn of the century, John Fatterini. Uh, you can look him up on the internet. I think it was John Rico. He, John Fatterini, he um, owned and ran Grattan Warehouses. You remember the catalogues? And he and his wife, they pulled up the side of a road and they bought some grapes and they ate lots of them. And by the time somebody got to the car, they were dead. It turned out they were covered in arsenic. It was, anyway, it was covered in poison as an insecticide. Enough. We are having two South African wines today, both of which, and poor old Tanya, whose wines these are, they're both amazing wines. They're really good and they, they will make you feel better. Not worse. Should we talk immediately about, <laughs> about this? Please like, share and subscribe to this film. Not on the basis of that joke. Just on the rest of it. Thank you very much. Actually, got a couple of shout outs before we get stuck straight in. Hello, this is Natalie. Hello, Natalie. A sister from, a sister nurse from Guildford. Um, a couple of people sent in, people, uh, their friends and family saying, can, you nom can I nominate somebody to be on screen? Well, Natalie, yes, you can. And that is from Melody and from Andrew. Thank you very much indeed for sending it over. Uh, we've had a couple of questions about glasses before we get stuck in. Today's a really good one. I use one glass for everything, for sparkling white and red. It is the Richard Brendan uh, Jancis Robinson one glass. One glass goes with everything, including with fortified wines and ports and that kind of stuff. Um, so I recommend it thoroughly. Interestingly, here's a weird fact, and I'm going to stop rambling, but I discovered at the weekend that Bertrand Russell, the great philosopher, had met Gladstone at dinner. And apparently, it's relevant to this, at the dinner, the only thing he could remember Gladstone saying, because he was only quite a small boy, was that it was excellent port, but why have they served it to me in a claret glass? Well, Gladstone, if you'd had a Richard Brendan, um, Jancis Robinson one glass, it would have been the same one all the way through. How times have changed since the days of Gladstone. Um, right, we're going to get stuck straight in. These wines are all from Tanya Wright. Tanya Wright, fine wines in Norfolk, particularly the North Norfolk area. I love showing people, we've got some quite big people. Tanya is just a person in her home digging out really good wines that she loves and selling them out of her own house. Uh, and she's travelling around, she's still making deliveries from her house. She'll come and she'll visit for you. I'm sure if you want a lot of one of these, she'll post them up to you as well. But particularly people in the North Norfolk area, Alan Partridge, hello. Um, she, her strap line is independent wines for independent people. A good strap line. And uh, you can get in touch with her. We'll put the details down, down the bottom, but Tanya with a J, um, F right at gmail.com. Well, she'll go and put it down. Her mother is Dutch, she says. Should we get stuck straight into a wine before we do anything else? I'm going to start off with this. This is Laborie. Blanc de Blanc, South African fizz. I've got them all in the wrong order today. God, you'd think I'd plan better, wouldn't you? Um, it is about £16. Now, this is a method cap classique, which means that it's effectively champagne method, but made in South Africa. Made from the Chardonnay grape. Ooh, citrusy green apple, but toast and brioche. Mmm. Now, it is like a fruitier version of champagne. Has that mouth filling perfume of champagne. But there's a bit more fruit, there's a bit more zest to it. And um, there are people who say, you know, I like champagne, but I can't just drink it on its own. Some of you are saying, yes, you very much can. That is the kind of fruity wine you can enjoy on its own. Creamy, rounded, really fresh acidity, uh, but it's really ripe acid to that. Oh, it's good. Like this. Mm. Labrie been making wines for ages and ages in um, sparkling wine. And that won the Best Value Sparkling Wine Award at the Wine Merchants Awards. Um, and I can see why, actually, it's brilliant value. It's 16 pounds, it's amazing stuff. Um, who else do we need to go and mention? I've got a thing down here. It is a Winerist. A couple of people have written in saying, how do we plan 
for what we do afterwards. You know, I'm sitting at home, I want to think about going to a vineyard. Uh, can I recommend you go and visit winerist.com? 2,000 different experiences. They help us out, but also they appear in series three. Hello there. You know who I'm talking about. So you are going to see Deanna from uh, Winerist in series three of the show, which is coming out in a, in a few weeks. And she sends me away on a wine experience. So go and have a visit and start planning your post-lockdown wine tour future there. 2,000 different tours. Hard to recommend stuff in Douro. In, yeah, in the Douro in Portugal. Uh, what have we got next? Painted Wolf Viognier. A couple of people asked about pronunciations of this. Viognier. La lingua tra i denti. Tongue between the teeth. This is really classy stuff. All of these wines are around the same price. It's about £17. Now, you might think £17 for New World Viognier. This is from South Africa. It's a bit much. Absolutely not. This is serious wine. It's been in oak. Elegant. Uh, peachy. Which is a, a thing anyway for Viognier. But it's not massively floral. Because it's been sitting in oak for a certain amount. Um, it is made by... I've got their names somewhere. I put them down. I can't find them. Anyway, they're here on the screen. And she does the labels. He does the winemaking. Beautiful wines. Mm. It's dry, complex. It's, the oak is really nicely integrated into the wine. Richer white meat dishes, I suspect. It's got enough fruit to sit alongside, you know, vinaigrette salads. Oh, I like that a lot. Now, we've got. I'm rattling through today because I know I don't want to keep you too long. Good cause today. Feed NHS. Go and visit www.feednhs.com. A not-for-profit campaign set up by Matt Lucas, who I used to look like when I was fat. Um, might put a picture of that up on screen as well. Just see. Do you think that that... <laughs> I look like Matt Lucas there. A little bit. Um, Helen McCrory, Damien Lewis and Leon Restaurants. And it's going to raise as much money as possible for NHS trusts to get healthy, hot meals to NHS teams on the front line. Um, so visit www.feednhs.com. It's a brilliant campaign, that. like it a lot. Next, oh, now this is really interesting. This is Bouchon Pais Salvaje. Salvaje means savage. Savages. Um, this is about £16. It's very pale. You might be able to see that sort of pale ruby colour. And it's Beaujolais-esque. This is made from the Pais grape variety, which is this old, sometimes known as Mission, because missionaries used to take it around. Um, it originally comes from the Canary Islands, I think, and it was brought across by the early missionaries. And it grows these vast bunches. But it's quite a thin skin grape variety. It's not richly coloured, so you get quite lightly coloured wines. More people are doing interesting stuff with this in Chile. And I cannot recommend it enough. But the best thing about this, this, these grow wild, which is why it's called Salvaje, the savage or the wild one. Have a look on the screen now. Can you see how it's growing up in trees? And they have to use these big, tall ladders to climb up and harvest these bunches of grapes, which is how vines used to grow. If you go to old Etruscan wines, that was how they, it was all part of this mixed agriculture. And it's this crunchy, bright, Strawberry fruit, very, very strawberry. Mm. Fresh acidity, dry. It's not heavy weight at all. It is lightly framed. Useful word that. It's a lightly framed wine. It's got this very velvety, restrained sort of tannin to it. Um, it goes with kind of everything. It's on the red end of that spectrum of wines that sit in the middle. That, there's elements of this that are quite white whiny. Put that in the fridge. It is, I love this for summer drinking. Lightly chilled. In fact, I've got a question that's coming up about that. Because you can chill this, but don't put any ice cubes in it. Because somebody has written in. What does it say here? Um, it's a question from Hannah, Galvin, Lou and Marcus, who are all locked down in an Irish castle. Really? I feel like I've got some smart, quite smart people watching this. Uh, with warmer weather approaching, is it acceptable to put ice in our rosé? Get out. Get No, get out. Stand in the corridor. What sort of a question is that? You've let yourself down. Let the house down. Your parents. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yes, if you want to. 
I don't see why not. In fact, you can have a thing called a piscine where you have crushed ice and uh, Promels are rosé. It's not called a piscine and it's a lovely long way of drinking it. So it's entirely acceptable. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise because they're talking out the bahuki. If you put too much ice in a red like that, it probably tastes a bit too tannic. But if you want to go and put it in your rosé, go on, fill your boots. Absolutely lovely. Brilliant wine, that. That is uh, £16-ish, something around that. And I cannot recommend these three enough. Three very stylish wines, all in the same glass, all showing great expression. Right, enough time for a few questions. I have a special request to say hello to Sarah Shaw. It's your birthday this week, isn't it, Sarah? And Sarah is a teacher in Chippenham and she has been keeping the school open. We've had a couple of these requests. Thank you very much indeed for keeping the school open for key workers. It's really important and we are very grateful. Um, and I think today the BBC started its special things with daytime lessons, so hopefully that takes some of the pressure off. Also to William Moore, who is now full-blown head teacher at a primary school down in the southwest, who's acting head teacher and he's had a field promotion. Well done, sir, to you. So he's now proper full head teacher of primary school down in the West Country. That's great stuff. We've got a few of those. Sarah, William, all teachers. We're very grateful to you. Um, let's jump into a couple of questions. Oh, here's another thing. This is a great thing to go and do. This is Chris. Chris is volunteering with the Royal Voluntary Service. And he's also sent me a little picture, thank you very much for this, Chris, of a Susamaniello that he's been enjoying. Susamaniello is quite a rare grape, that. I hope you enjoyed it. Susamaniello means... Um, little donkey in the Puglian dialect and nobody really agrees why. Some people say it's because it's stubborn like a small donkey, other people say it's because it's kind of weighed down by, the, it produces massive bunches like pais, uh, particularly in its youth and so the vine would be weighed down like a donkey with big pack, you know, packs on the sides of them but nobody really agrees whether it's because of that. In its older age it's stubborn like a donkey, it doesn't produce very many grapes. In its youth it's weighed down, so it's probably both reasons. But well done, Chris, more importantly, for going and volunteering. You're looking cracking there. That is great. Right. Um, Michael on Twitter, uh, he says, the show's getting added laughter and joy to what can be tough. Uh, where can you find the wine lists? Here, on YouTube, uh, and we are adding them to our um, newsletters that are coming out. Um, thank you very much indeed to Victoria Moore, who we mentioned briefly last week with her book and who described me as a polymath wit and writer in her column on Saturday. And fewer thanks to Tia Howler von Beiterwolf, who I will be getting back to uh, with his initiative later in the week, who called me a wine nonce. I was hoping it's a wine ponce, because I think they mean quite different things. Uh, Natalie Retief says, I'm doing my WSET level two, and you, you've inspired me to carry on with your studies to diploma level. What other documentary movie series can you recommend for wine lovers? Obviously, other than The Wine Show. Red Obsession, it's a brilliant film about uh, wine in China. Uh, the Somme series of films I enjoy very much. Blood Into Wine, about... Um, Maynard James Keenan, his winemaking. Mondo Vino, about the world of wine and the sort of commercialisation of wine. It's a great movie. Uh, we'll put these in the newsletter. Um, Sour Grapes, Rudy Kiernan and the big scandal that, uh, that he had. Uh, and there's a brand new movie that's just come out. can't remember. Uncorked. Can look at Uncorked. It's literally just come out uh, very recently. Uh, Scott uh, Paborsa from Ontario says, What's the difference between Pinot Gris and Pinot Grigio? I was under the impression that they're the same grape. They are the same grape. There are three broad stylistic versions. Pinot Grigio, which is this bone-dry North Italian version. Um, it's the same grape that makes Pinot Gris, but it, it's made in a more French style, so it tends to be more waxy, fleshy, uh, richer, and the, the, the producers sometimes make it in a slightly off-dry style. And then you get American Pinot Gris, Pinot Gris, which tends to be very voluptuous. And Pinot Gris, bear in mind, is a grey grape variety. It is neither a white nor a red. It sits between. So there's actually quite a lot going on in the skins. You can do quite a bit with it. Um, and do you think that winemakers will ever start making more 100% Carignan wines? Um, you've visited Longadoc and now the Vigno Collective in Chile. They will. The Pace movement has sort of grown out of the Carignan movement. So we will go and see more of those um, I suspect. William Parsons, thank you very much for your long explanation about why masculine and feminine are inappropriate terms for winemaking. Entirely agree I was having a bit of fun with Animus Animar. So I wasn't being entirely serious. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Right, I think that's more than enough. Thank you very much indeed to Tanya. 
Tanya Wright will cut your details down there. Go and visit her. Well, you can't visit, she doesn't have a shop. Get in touch with her in North Norfolk and go and try these brilliant wines. And look out in your local area for people who are doing just this kind of thing. Passionate wine people. Brilliant stuff. Go and buy some of these wines. Uh, Richard, Brendan and Jancis for the glasses and the decanter. Thank you very much back there. Um, remember, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> and turn on your notifications and go and visit us on social and look at all the old clips. We're going to be bringing out some more bits and pieces to keep you all entertained uh, over the next few weeks as we bring out series three. And you want to be subscribed because then you'll find out all the early bits and details and so on. Stay safe. Thank you to other people who helped me out getting this thing together. It's, um, it's not entirely my own work. And I will see you, even you in that Irish castle with your rosé with the ice in it, I will see you on Wednesday. Bye for now.